loves welcome back to my channel welcome if you're new here this is gonna be our first episode of a new series we are talking relationship astrology 101 i'm super excited to get into today's topic i am also getting over a kind of sort of mm, what i would describe as a psychic cold but um we don't have time to get into this <laughs> So my nose is a little stuffy and my voice sounds a little bit weird, but the messages are probably going to be the same. But I kind of feel like, no, we don't have time to talk about this because I'm not going to edit this video. So let's just move on. Okay, so if you're new here, nice to meet you. I am Nath Hughes. I'm a life manifestation and mindset coach. I'm also an astrologer and I just really like to focus on astrology um for fun and stuff like that but i'm really good at it and i felt inspired to talk about astrology today today so we're here i create programs workshops and content for self-led women and people who deeply want to understand themselves and their world all of the work that I do across all of my platforms is really set with the intention to help you gain um, a greater sense of empowerment over your life and over your reality. Today, the objective is that you'll leave more confident in your understanding of synastry and also basic astrology. Hopefully, this information helps you to navigate your relationships better, understand your relationships better, um, you know, get intimacy with your partners and all that good stuff better. So let's jump right into this in today's video we are talking about mars and mercury in synastry so before we jump super duper into the content i just want to make sure that we're kind of all on the same page so what is synastry synastry is basically how two people's individual energies interact and impact one another so we all as individuals have our own natal charts. If you don't know what your natal chart is, all you need is your birthday and your birth time and your birthplace, and you can figure it out using a whole bunch of different things that are online. And I think that I'm going to have to pause this after this slide because I'm going to have to go get some tissue for my nose. But anyway, so basically we all have very specific energies and charts based on when we were born where we were born all of that good stuff we have different planets moving through different signs and all of those energies kind of come together in a recipe that just makes us really uniquely us and so each of us individually with our own unique energy will go into the lives of other people and, you know, we bring our energy with us. And how our energy interacts with other people's energy, we can kind of study and understand through synastry. So by looking at two different people's natal charts, you're kind of getting an overview of two different people's energy. We can compare charts and we can understand how one person's energy impacts the next. I feel like I've said it a million different ways, but I really just want you to understand it. A really basic example is like I have a Pisces sun. Pisces is very intuitive and creative. I am a psychic lady. So when I go into the live of other people I typically help and support them with becoming more sensitive becoming more intuitive maybe becoming more creative and inspired now that's a generalized blanket overview and things can get a lot more complex than that but that's basically all that you need to know so that's what we're talking about today we're understanding how the energies of Mercury and Mars, when you have those aspects in your connections, how that um, impacts your relationships and shows up. Okay, that's enough. You get it. You understand. All right. 
first thing that we're going to talk about is Mercury, the planet. So Mercury, the planet rules over the signs of Gemini and Virgo. Each planet rules over specific zodiac signs or astrological signs, whatever. The themes of the planet Mercury would be communication, intellect, learning, your daily routine, how you choose to be of service, how you like to play, your early childhood development and experiences, and even like your sense of humor. So this stuff, of course, can get so detailed and like all that shit. So like whatever, this is like super duper basics, um, probably not the most surface level stuff, but we're just still kind of tapping the surface with this stuff. I do not have the intentions to go hella fucking deep with this okay so your mercury sign doesn't have to be in the sign of your mercury planet okay i am a little bit sick so my brain is a little bit like i'm functioning (laughs) i'm at like 75 percent brain capacity right now okay so you're just gonna have to bear with me because I feel strongly to record this video and upload this video now um and I am somebody who has mercury in Aries so I really have to kind of strike when the iron is hot so this is actually a really perfect example mercury my planet of communication intellect learning daily routine being of service play early childhood development and experiences and humor is in the fiery sign of Aries. So Aries is a fire sign, very passionate, maybe even hot headed. Aries is ruled by the planet Mars, which we're going to talk about in the next slide. But basically, Aries is very straight to the point. Aries is very direct energy. It's a cardinal sign. Cardinal signs in astrology are going to be the starters, right? So with Mercury, my planet of communication and intellect, I'm somebody who probably, not probably, this is true. I am somebody who learns things really, really quickly and easily. I'm also somebody who can um, tend to communicate kind Kind of quickly, especially when I'm really excited about things because Aries being a fire sign being ruled by Mars, when I'm really passionate about things, when I really care about things, maybe sometimes it sounds like I'm, um, you know, yelling or speaking really, um, quickly. So the way that I communicate and the way that I think is going to be in alignment with attributes of Aries and with Aries fire sign energy, Aries cardinal starting energy. Aries is not necessarily known as the the sign that sees it through. It's not that they don't have that staying power. It's that I would describe Aries as being like, you know, when you have, I think it's called like a flint when you're um, trying to start a, a fire and you have to get that initial spark. It's like Aries is that initial spark. And once you have that initial spark, you can kind of, you know, do whatever you do to the flame to kind of keep it going and get it burning and, you know, grow it and expand it. But if you don't take action to create that initial spark if you don't initiate that initial spark there's not going to be a fire at all so because i have mercury in the sign of aries when i feel um creative inspiration my mercury is in my fifth house we're not really talking about houses in this video we probably will in the future but the fifth house is the house of creativity for you know the 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 amount of time that we have in today's video so when i have an inspiration for something creative, I really have to move on that. When I get a spark of inspiration, I have to choose to take action on that very quickly and immediately because if I don't, then I'll kind of lose it. Um, And that's, that's as much as we'll go into with that. So that's Mercury. Even though I talked about Mercury and Aries, that's one way that it can manifest, right? So your Mercury sign may or may not be in Aries. If you were somebody who had Mercury in Virgo, you might be watching this video going, oh my fucking God, she 
is <laughs> recording this video while she is sick and as you go through as you watch me go through different parts of the presentation there was only so much writing that I could do in the slides because when I'm doing astrology I do the best job when I'm very intuitive with it so I don't have any notes written down is just kind of like whatever comes through comes through virgo energy is a lot more methodical virgo energy likes to plan virgo energy is um that kind of daily routine energy virgo energy needs to have a plan in order to feel safe and secure Virgo energy is something that really appreciates structure so to somebody who has Mercury in Virgo they're probably going to be somebody who when it comes to communication they're probably going to um, sit back and think things through a little bit more just because they feel the inspiration to do something and create something doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to act on it and put it out there into the world. Virgo is an energy that of course wants to take action, but Virgo would probably spend more time um, planning what they're going to say in the video and planning to record the video once they are feeling better and their, you know, voice doesn't sound stuffy and they don't have to pause to get tissues or what the fuck ever, right? So, you have Mercury. Everybody has Mercury in their natal chart. Your Mercury is going to be in one of the 12 astrological signs. No cusps. It's going to be in one sign. What, what sign your Mercury is in or the sign that Mercury was transiting through on the date, time, and place of your birth is going to reflect back to you how you communicate, how you think, how you learn your ideal daily routine, how you like to be of service. I have Mercury in Aries in the fifth house. I like to be of service by sharing my creative ideas in a quick, fast-paced manner. The way that I run my business is very much one where, oh my goodness, I don't have a timer for something else going off. <laughs> the way that I run my business is very much one where I take action when I feel inspired to take the action. Like, for example, videos like this. I've got other videos that I'm planning on doing and releasing. I am not somebody who likes to record videos and have them set up to premiere weeks out in advance. I actually hate it because when I create something and I put it out there, I want it out in the world now. I want people consuming my content now. Aries energy can be this energy of like rushing, right? You're passionately moving towards your desires and your goals. It physically pains me to have an idea like a video, something that I love, something that I'm so excited that I got to record and share with the world. I'm sharing my heart with the world, very much like fifth house energy themes. I'm creatively expressing myself on a soul level. Level. And I'm just going to sit on this and then I'm going to forget what the fuck I said in the video. So it's going to premiere in five weeks from now. And then people are going to be commenting. I'm not going to be able to respond back to them because baby, I don't remember what the fuck I said five weeks ago. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So as somebody with Mercury and Aries, the way that I like to be of service is kind of like quick, fast, in a hurry, different things like that. But I also have my moon sign in the sign of Capricorn. So there is more of like a really great capacity to view the bigger picture and work towards your goals and blah, blah, blah. But that's not really what we're talking about. We're getting a little bit too excited, too complex. Take it back. Calm down go back to the basics. So basically, I'm sitting and I'm realizing that I should have been talking about this a long time ago because it turns out that there's a lot of things that you guys probably don't know because I'm really good at this. Like I'm really good at a lot of things and well, other people are not <laughs> as good as me. <laughs> I also have Mercury in Aries conjunct 
Jupiter in Aries. So I'm very egotistical when it comes to my intellect and my creative projects because my Mercury and my Jupiter are both in the fifth house. Okay, so take it back. What are we focusing on? You've got your Mercury. Your Mercury is in a different sign. Different Mercuries in different signs in different houses. Oh my God, I'm recording on my macbook instead of my desktop and so of course the fan is on and you may hear the sounds of it acting like it's going to blow up but it's not and i'm sorry um <laughs> okay so where am i you've got your mercury your mercury is in a sign not only is your mercury in a sign but your mercury is also in a house today we're not getting that complex today we're having a conversation about how your Mercury is interacting with your partner's Mars. And I am looking at it in a romantic sense, but you don't have to make it romantic. Um, you can just kind of pick and choose whatever is resonating with you. So are you feeling me? The things that I find to be funny and hilarious really align with kind of like Aries themes, but also like fifth house themes like um the fifth house in astrology is kind of like entertainment and different things like that so i'm somebody who really likes um theater the fifth house is also a house of like romance so because i have mercury which to me is going to represent humor i've got this planet of humor in my fifth house this house of the things that i'm gonna that i'm gonna find entertaining i'm going to really like a lot of romantic stuff because the fifth house is also romance i'm gonna like romantic entertaining things that are also funny and that's my very favorite genre of movies i love romantic comedies so my sense of humor is being reflected in my mercury sign and also my mercury placement and also the other different you know energies that i have in my chart that we're not talking about today are you feeling me okay so we've talked about mercury please go to the next slide before i lose my mind and now we're going to talk about Mars. So you have Mercury. Now we're talking about Mars, the planet. Mars, the planet, rules over the signs of Aries and Scorpio. I'm always going to include Scorpio. Now Pluto also rules over the sign of Scorpio. So some people might just say Mars rules over Aries and leave it at that. But I'm always going to include Scorpio. It's a traditional ruler. It is what it is. And that's how I do things over here. Okay. So Mars rules the signs of Aries and Scorpio. The themes of the planet Mars is our drive, our ambition, our desire. It can also represent our physicality. It is a planet of intensity. It's a planet of transformation. It's a planet of anger. It's a planet of passion. How you, how quick you are to anger, you would see in your Mars placement, your um, more sensual, intimate, adult desires i got to talk within the youtube guidelines here you're gonna see that in the planet of mars mars is about desire so we can have the desire to connect with people in a very physically intimate way mars is going to be the number one thing that we're going to look at when we're having the conversation of our desire to connect with people physically how physically attracted we feel to another person but other than that physical attraction or like it's just attraction it doesn't just have to be physical attraction but it's attraction but that attraction manifests in physical responses within our own bodies you know what i'm saying okay you know what i'm saying so mars is a planet of drive and ambition and desire um i have my mars in the planet of scorpio so one of the things that people will talk about with people who have Mars and Scorpio is um, <laughs> like vengeance and stuff. And the reason why I bring this up is because when you're like learning about this and you're like going through like the articles and stuff, I mean, 
God, maybe like a fucking decade ago that I was going through this. But honestly, a lot of astrology shit out there is repeated stuff, which no tea, no shade. Um, so it probably is still the same. But basically, when you look at Mars and Scorpio, it's just like, if you wrong these people, they don't care how long it takes. They will get their revenge. They will wait. They will never forget. They will get their revenge, right? So the reason why that's relevant is because Mars, our planet of drive, ambition, desire, intensity, transformation, anger, and passion, whatever sign that's in is going to reflect how we go after things. And anger is this powerful emotion. Whenever we're talking about our drive, our ambition, anger, and passion, we're talking about powerful emotions, right? That's why Mars is this planet of intensity. When you've experienced a huge, deep betrayal, that's obviously going to create a lot of intense feelings and emotions within you. So those are as a consequence of those intense feelings and emotions, we're going to take action period, point blank. So when you have the sign and the energy of Scorpio, unlike Aries, Aries is the energy that's like, yeah, they might be super fucking hot headed and they might go off and they might be really mad and they might be really scary. Um, but the energy of Scorpio is a little bit more, um, like, Sure, maybe we would say like calculated, but it's just more like, um, like stamina. When I think of the sign of Scorpio, I think of stamina, a stamina that Aries energy and placements don't necessarily have. Aries energy has the power to create empires, right? Because they're, they're the spark and they start things. But with Aries energy, it maybe is a little bit more of like a stop and go type of vibe. Whereas Scorpio energy is more slow and steady and paced. And they're very driven by their very intense feelings and emotions because a lot of Scorpio people tend to experience a lot of pain and trauma in their lives and in their childhoods, you may be, depending on your vibration, are more likely to come across a Scorpio who has been scorned than you are to come across a Scorpio who is more so connected to their passion and their purpose. And what I mean when I say this is that There are Scorpios like Amanda Francis. There are Scorpios like myself who just kind of have this really crazy, supernatural um, stamina. How did that person achieve that much success? How did you um, create that? But it's not necessarily like a Jupiterian, um, you know, growth and expansion vibe. Although, of course, you know, you can have those Jupiterian aspects and energies and that would of course, be really um, helpful. But with the energy of Scorpio, there is a resilience. That's what I would say. Scorpio is a very resilient energy. And so it could be an experience where they're channeling that ability to be resilient in their commitment to you know, fucking you over because you fucked them over. But it can also be seen in experiences where you're seeing Scorpio energies really display a resilience when it comes to their drive, their ambition, and their desire. So because I have Mars in the sign of Scorpio, the way that I approach my drive, ambition, and desire is going to be very much in alignment with my passions and there's a resilience with the way that I move towards my goals and there's also an intense intensity with the way that I move towards my goals. Amanda Francis who she doesn't have Mars and Scorpio but she's a Scorpio rising in one of her videos and one of her trainings she says um I allow myself to want what I want and I allow myself to basically want it so bad that it damn near hurts okay so there's just this really intense energy and desire that scorpio can channel 
and put into reaching their goals and their desires? How do you sit and be an entrepreneur when the first several years of your business, you're not making enough money? You have that Scorpio resilience and energy. Okay, so that's Mars. How we go after our dreams and our desires. If you're somebody who's watching this and you have like Mars in Virgo, Mars and Virgo is somebody who is very habitual, right? Virgo sixth house energy is all about our daily routines. So if you're somebody who has Mars in Virgo, then you're going to think about your plan and you are going to want to have you're going to think about your goal and you're immediately going to go, okay, I have to have a plan to achieving this goal. And these are the things that I have to do every single day habitually in order to get my goal. If you're somebody who has Mars in Taurus, you might be someone who is very motivated by the desire for material possessions. Somebody with Mars and Scorpio could also have that energy because these are just like um, signs that really represent wealth and oh my God, my freaking pool, my freaking pool is on. <laughs> it has to be two o'clock in the morning and it is 2.36. Perfect. Perfect. Well, we're here now and I feel like we're having a good time. So let's continue. So basically, you've got Mars energy in Virgo that wants to take action every single day. They're going to form helpful habits in order to reach their goals. If it's somebody who has like Mars and Virgo energy and they're like in a low vibe, then they're not going to have habits that support them in reaching their goals and they're not going to be people who are very successful. But if you're somebody with Mars and Virgo energy and you have a good routine, you shop for yourself consistently moving towards your goals, then it's kind of like there's nothing that you can't accomplish. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So Mars is what you desire, what you like, what you're into, what kind of freaky stuff you like to do if you're picking up what I'm putting down. It's your passion, it's intensity, it is what you want, and it's how you go after it. And depending on what sign that planet is in, will reflect back more specifically how you do those things. Are you following me? So if I was somebody who had, I'm trying to think because I didn't think of any examples before this, like, hmm. I'm somebody who has Mars and Scorpio in the first house. So the first house I'm going to associate with Aries. I have a lot of Mars energy in my chart. I am Mars ruled, like Mars dominant. So Aries hot-headed energy yes I kind of have that Scorpio resilience it really takes a lot to really really get me pissed off but at the same exact time because Mars is in my first house I kind of experience hothead tendencies from time to time some people might say allegedly <laughs> allegedly okay but Mars also being something that really represents my physicality because it's on my first house which is your ascendant that's your body but it's also your persona mars energy drive ambition desire passion my energy gets really strongly stored in my body so when i'm not physically moving my body will get like bloated if I'm not physically being active, my body will communicate to me very clearly that that's not a good idea. Energy, anger, frustration, and all of that stuff can get stored in my body if I am not taking physical action to move and to shift that stuff. Amanda Francis is somebody else who, she has a Scorpio rising, which even if you don't have Mars on the first, you basically have Mars on the first because Scorpio is ruled by Mars. 
So you have that physical energy in your first house. And when she talks about um, manifesting, one way that she talks about manifesting is moving energy into your body, exercising, using physical movement to tap into the vibration of your desire and bring those experiences into your physical body. I think in one story, maybe in her book, she talks about um, there have been many times where she's like in a soul cycle class or something like that. And she's pedaling on the bike and she's seeing herself reaching the goals and all of that stuff. It's using your physical body to manifest and shift energy. So when things aren't right energetically or when things are off whack, it's going to manifest in your physical body body okay i just want you to have a better understanding of mars as a planet it talks about how you go after your goals it can talk to you about the things that you desire like with mars and taurus you're going to be somebody who's very financially motivated with mars and probably any of the earth signs you're going to be somebody who is very financially motivated because earth signs like comfortable things so it can talk to you about the things that you want the things that you desire in terms of mars if you're somebody who's attracted to men or you're attracted to people with more masculine energy mars can tell you your ideal man your ideal masculine um so if you have mars in Virgo, your ideal man, your ideal masculine is probably going to be somebody who is a very hard worker, who really loves to be of service either to his community, to his job, to you, to your family. If you have Mars and Virgo, you probably want to marry somebody who's like a doctor or a veterinarian or somebody who is doing some work where they're really giving to the world um, selflessly. You know what I mean? So that's like Mars and Virgo energy, but it's not just about masculines and your ideal man. It's also about, you know, the things that get you going and the things that excite you. So, okay, we can, should we talk about that more now? Or maybe we'll just do another video about Mars. Yeah. Okay. So that's it on Mars. Are you feeling me? Mars, drive, ambition, desire, physicality. It can talk about how you look physically. It can talk about the things that you're attracted to physically. Girl. Okay. Seriously. And like, okay, it's not really a 2.5, but like we have to talk about this. So, cause I was thinking about this video and I was thinking about all the boys I've loved before. You know what I mean? And I kind of dated this guy one time and he had Mars in Pisces. His Mars is in my fifth house. And, um, <laughs> Okay, so Pisces as a sign rules like body fat, right? And this man liked fat women, not in like a weird, not in like a weird fetishizing way, but just that's his type. So quite literally, Mars, what I'm attracted to physically in Pisces, Pisces rules body fat, I am attracted to women or people who are thicker than a sticker. What can I say? <laughs> okay, so it it can literally manifest in a million different ways. And I okay, okay, <laughs> no, we can't talk. We can't say anything more. We can't. We can't say anything more. Just believe me when I tell you this. Okay, no, I will say. <laughs> That is really a pattern of mine. And if you're new here, then you will get used to it eventually. Because sometimes I'm like, no, I shouldn't say that. But then I'm like, oh, no, I do want to say that. So then I do decide to say it. But anyway, I have Venus in Aries. And Venus talks about like, you know, also the things that you find to be very beautiful. So what you're attracted to. And we'll talk about Venus in a different video. But I have Venus in Aries. And Aries rules the head. And, oh, I can't say the thing that I really want to say because it's just like super X-rated and like I just can't get into it. Um, 
But there has been a theme throughout my life and my existence where I really, I really am attracted to men's heads. And okay, so this guy that I'm gonna that I the 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 guy with Mar- Mars and Pisces, he also had Venus and Aries, and I don't think that he was. I don't think that his head thing was the same thing as my head thing. You know what I mean? Because things manifest, obviously, for different people in different ways. And one of the ways that my Venus and Aries manifests is like, I just, I really like men with big heads. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It just, it's the energy. What can I say? <laughs> what can I say? But this guy had Venus and Aries. Aries was had Venus is like what you find beautiful. And if it's your Venus placement, then Venus is like um, your ideal woman. Um, but it's also just what you find to be attractive, right? So if you're somebody who's attracted to women um, and you're somebody who likes to date women, then like Venus will talk to you about that too, right? So anyway, so he had Venus and Aries. And um, okay, so like there was a moment this like, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to say it in a way because like, you know, like YouTube is like weird sometimes. Well, not weird, but just like, you know what I mean? Like, baby, this video needs to be monetized. You know what I'm saying? Um, so anyway, so we're like kind of sort of hooking up, whatever. And I got too far into it and then I got embarrassed but now we're here and now I kind of have to share not like I have to share but just like okay we have to move on from this so anyway so we're like hooking up and this guy like (laughs) I'm trying to think of a way to say it in a way that's not weird I mean I don't know I just he also likes heads that's what I will say he is also very attracted two heads in his own way and I can't give you more details maybe one day we will have a podcast episode where we talk about it and I can give you all the details it's nothing crazy and raunchy I just I'm not going to put any more energy and effort into figuring out how to express that better so that's the planet of Mars okay Mars is what you're attracted to what you like what you desire and maybe how you go after your goals maybe what your goals are it's all of that okay so now we're talking about the connection we're bringing these two energies together you have a mars person and you have a mercury person now every single aspect is not necessarily like relevant okay how do i explain this i'm trying to keep it super basic so if you're watching this and you know a little bit more about astrology you're like i already know about the aspects then like i love that for you but we don't all know that you know what i mean so i just want to i want to make sure that as many people as possible can be listening to this and following along with it and really understanding where we're going so okay aspects are what we use to talk about the connections between the planets right so there are oh just kidding we're not talking about okay well no let's just talk about it here and we'll get further into it in the next slide So there are certain aspects like things called trines and a trine is when two planets, it's kind of like a degree thing, but long story short, for all intents and purposes, a trine is just when you have two signs of the same element that are connecting. So there's elements and I'll tell you them now because maybe you don't know. You have fire, fire signs are Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. You have water, water signs are Pisces, Cancer, and Scorpio. You have earth, earth signs are Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. And lastly, you have air signs. Air signs are Aquarius, Libra, and Gemini. So a trine is when you have two signs that belong in the same 
elemental family. So if you've got a trine between your Mars and your person's Mercury, then maybe you have Mars in Virgo and they have Mercury in Capricorn. Or maybe you have Mercury in Aquarius and they have Mars in Libra. Or maybe they have Mars in Cancer and you have Mercury in Pisces. Do you understand? That's the long and the short of it. You want to understand more deeply? Do they have what aspects do we have between all of that good stuff? You can look up synastry accounts, synastry charts. You can compare your two stuff. Um, if I feel like it, I'll link, I'll link it in the description. If not, you'll have to Google it, but it's super easy to find. I'm, I very much most likely will link it in the description, but I might not feel like it because I'm under the weather. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, let's move on. So that's a trine. Then you have things like oppositions. An opposition is when you have two signs that oppose each other. So the opposite of Virgo is Pisces. The opposite of Aquarius is Leo. Some people call them sister signs, opposite signs. I consider them to be two peas in a pod or two different sides to the same coin. They appear to be completely different, but really they're the same. You know what I mean? And they're really great opportunities for us to learn balance. The opposite of Libra is Aries. The opposite of Scorpio is Taurus. So if you have Mercury and Scorpio and your partner has Mars in Taurus, then you have an opposition. And let me tell you, the guy, and I don't know why I keep bringing this guy up. I swear. It just, the astrology, okay? The astrology is just relevant. It's nothing more than that. The guy with Mer Mer Mars and Pisces, and I just remember everybody's birth chart because that's just, that's just who I am. I was always going to do that because that's just who I am. I could look at it one time and I'm like, boom, I've clocked your teeth. Like, <laughs> anyway. So I have Mars and Scorpio. He had his sun and Mercury retrograde in Taurus. So his Mercury was opposite my Mars. And the sensual tension was... Hmm. Out of this world. It was good. But because there was terrible communication, not enough reflection, he pissed me off. Why? Because Mars is a planet of fucking anger. <laughs> so when you have Mars and Mercury connects, when you have something kind of nice and harmonious, like a conjunction... And a conjunction is just when it's the same sign. So if you have Mars in Scorpio and your person has Mercury in Scorpio, that's a conjunction. That's harmonious. That's we twin in. You know what I'm saying? We're the same. Harmonious. Oh, I love it here. This just feels so normal and natural to me. Wonderful. When there's that opposition, there's more opportunities for reflection. We'll talk more about that later. I have it in a later slide. And that's why I don't like putting too much information here. Because I like to just get on here and riff and go with the flow and talk about it as it's coming out, you know? Ugh. But anyway, whatever. We're here. So, okay. Put a pin in that. What's the point? The point is that your Mercury and your person's Mars... Are connecting in some way but sometimes they might not be it might not be a relevant connection like you might have mercury in aries and your person has 
Mars, and Virgo. It's not that you guys can't be together. It's not that there will never be an attraction. It's not, it doesn't necessarily have to be anything negative. And I know that there are a whole bunch of like little different names for aspects, but I don't study that. And quite frankly, I don't care about it either. That might change in the future, but that is my current stance, okay? I'm going to focus on a trine, an opposition, a conjunction, or a sextile. I like sextiles. Sextiles or, or a square, right? You don't have to memorize any of these. We'll talk more about them in the next slide and as we continue to, um, you know, do videos on the channel. But the point is that if you don't have a sextile in opposition, a square, a conjunction, or a trine, that doesn't mean that you can't experience attraction to your person. It just means that this Mars Mercury experience might not be something that's present within your connection. Of course, you can still have these experiences in some other ways. There's a million different, you know, ways that things can connect and blah, blah, blah. But this video specifically is for those of you who are either wanting to learn more about this or who have partners where your Mercury or your Mars is forming a connection and aspect to their Mercury or their Mars. And when it comes down to degrees, the more tighter that aspect is, the closer those aspects are in number, the more intense that's gonna feel. So if you've got a partner who has Mars and Aquarius at zero degrees and you've got Mercury and Leo at 28 degrees, sure, you've got some Mercury, Mars themes, connections kind of sort of going on, but it's probably not going to be the strongest, most intense manifestation of this energy, right? But if you have Mercury in Sagittarius and your person has Mars, oh, sorry, I need to put a degree there. If you have Mercury in, I'm making all of this up as I go along, right? So if you have Mercury in Sagittarius at 22 degrees, and your lover has Mars in Sagittarius at 20 degrees. Oh, baby, it's on and popping. That's a really, really close aspect. Baby girl, that word just left my fucking brain. But do you understand what I'm saying? The closer the degrees are, the more intense it's going to feel. Okay? So... We've got your Mars person and your Mercury person. You could experience being the Mars and Mercury person depending on the charts, right? So you'll look, you'll figure it out. I trust that you're capable and you're competent. We have the planet of passion and drive, which is Mars, meeting the planet of fun, learning, and communication, which is Mercury. When these two planets, these two energies come together, the Mercury person's intellect, their daily routine, and basically kind of like their way of being. Because when you think about it, the way that you think and the way that you speak obviously is going to impact the actions that you take and it's going to impact how you present yourself, how you communicate, right? Well, well, obviously we're talking about communication, but we're talking about expressing what is alive within you. So how you do that, these are really big aspects that contribute to your sense of self and, you know, how you identify who you are. So the Mercury person's way of being their sense of humor, even the sound of their voice and their speech activates connects with, ignites the Mars person's drive, desire, and vice versa. 
So if you have Mars, if you're the Mars person, you have Mars in, I'm trying to think of a sign that I haven't said yet. Let's say you have Mars in Cancer. If you have Mars in Cancer and your person has Mercury in Scorpio, then that's going to form a really beautiful trine, right? These things get more specific, sometimes with the degrees, things are a little bit different. But again, we're trying to be as basic as I can, okay? So if you've got Mars in Cancer, your drive, your desire, your ambition is going to be really connected to your emotions, how you emotionally process, how you feel about yourself, what you feel that you're worthy of, because cancer is ruled by the moon. So you've got Mars, drive, desire, ambition, passion, what you're attracted to. And then you've got the moon there, which is going to be your emotions, your emotional needs, your well-being, you being taken care of, you feeling safe and secure. So that energy, Mars and Cancer, and then you've got your person who has Mercury and Scorpio that's trining your Mars and Cancer. The person with Mercury and Scorpio is probably going to be very intuitive, right? If you've got a trine between Mars and Cancer and Mercury and Scorpio, the Mercury and Scorpio person might really understand you, intuitively get you. You feel safe and secure to come out of your shell because that Cancerian energy, what's your sign? The crab. Cancers can be more closed off, drawing within themselves, especially if they feel unsafe or insecure. Somebody who has Scorpio energy, Scorpio is kind of like a deep um, penetrative energy because it's kind of like omniscient in a way. Scorpio energy is kind of like um, clear cognizant, I would say, which is just like really psychic. I just know things. I just understand things. Scorpio is also an energy that really pays attention to detail. So if you have Mars in Cancer and you're dealing with somebody who has Mercury in Scorpio, that's probably the Mercury person is probably somebody who really understands you, somebody who really pays attention to you, somebody who when you're in your little mood You know what I mean? They understand that. They pick up on that. They're like, okay, my Mars and Cancer person is kind of going through it right now. The Mercury in Scorpio person is probably the type of person who brings you candy when you're feeling sad or something happens to the Mars and Cancer person and the Mercury and Scorpio person is like, who do I have to beat up? Because Scorpio is still Mars energy, even though it's watery. So there's emotion there and there's intuitiveness there, but it's masculine because of that Martian energy, right? So the way that the Mercury and Scorpio person responds to the Mars in cancer person's emotions, feelings, their emotional needs, um, that would make them feel safe and secure. And when the Mars and cancer person feels safe and secure, they start to feel a little hot. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) I'm doing the best that I can with what I got y'all. Okay. I don't really a hundred percent understand what I can and what I cannot say. And I don't know if I can say H O R N Y. God, I hope I spelled that correctly. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know if I can say that. So We're going to do the best that we can with what we got. Because again, Mars rules our desire. So a Mars with cancer person is going to be really moved to desire by a partner who makes them feel safe and secure emotionally. 
a Mars and a Mercury and Scorpio person is going to be really, really good at attunement. They're going to be really, really good at understanding, even if it's just intuitively understanding what's going on, what's alive within the Mars in Cancer person. So if you're the Mars in Cancer person, when this Mercury person comes into your life, the way that they talk to you, the way that they treat you, their sense of humor, if you're somebody who would really appreciate a joke about them beating up your enemies, that's something that they would just kind of know and understand intuitively and would do. That's something that you would appreciate as a consequence of the way that they think, the way that they show up, the way that they treat you, the way that they speak to you. You're going to feel drawn towards them. You're going to feel moved to take action towards them because Mars energy, our ambition, our drive, and being in connection with that Mars and Scorpio person who can support you in feeling more safe and secure, that's going to inspire your drive and your ambition in other ways. And I know that I'm talking specifically about Mars and Cancer because it actually turns out that this is like the greatest example that I could ever give. We're going to pull it all together and we're going to make it general in a bit, but just let me finish this up. So the Mars and Cancer person, because they can get into that Cancer shell and get really kind of tightly wound up, go within themselves, feel really unsafe, really insecure. When Mars and Cancer feels unsafe and insecure, they're probably not taking action ruled by the moon you got to think about the fucking crabs who wait once a year for the blue moon or for the full moon or for the what the fuck ever and when the moon does the thing i don't really have a lot of cancer excuse me i don't really have a lot of cancer placement so i'm doing the best i can with what i got y'all you know what i mean like when the moon does the thing The crabs start moving and it's a whole bunch of crabs and they like go to the fucking beach and then they like get it on and then the babies are born and then like that's their whole cycle and it's dependent on the moon. The moon influences the tides, right? So the moon represents our emotions and our feelings. Mars and Cancer persons drive and ambition is heavily impacted by their emotions, their feelings of safety and security. So if the Mars and Cancer person doesn't feel safe, they're not going to go after their ambitions. They're not going to move forward towards their goals if they do not feel emotionally safe and secure. But when you introduce the partner who has Mercury and Scorpio, the godsend... You've introduced somebody who has the ability to attune to them intuitively, really, really understand them, support them in feeling safe and secure. When the Mars and Cancer person has the Mercury in Scorpio person by their side and they're feeling more safe and secure. Hold on, I got to plug this in. They go after their goals. They achieve their goals. So the Mars person, their ambition is activated by the Mercury person's existence, the way that they communicate, the way that they show up for them, right? And that's what we're seeing here, taking it back, going big picture once again. The Mars person's drive is going to be impacted by the Mercury person's intellect. This is one of those things where I'm going to say for better or for worse. Because if you were in a connection with somebody who had Mercury and Scorpio and who was more low vibe and it was an unhealthy experience, 
than the Mercury in Scorpio person if they were jealous, if they didn't support the Mars in Cancer person, they would be able to intuitively pick up on things that they could say to influence that person negatively, to influence their confidence. The Mars and Cancer person was like, I'm working on this project and I don't really know if I should move forward with this and da 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 da. And the Mercury and Scorpio person was like, ooh, this is not your best work. I don't think that you should do this. Then that could heavily impact the Mars and Cancer person's self-esteem. Of course, we're all adults. We're all responsible for the way that we handle ourselves and we handle our energies. I just wanted to, you know, throw that in there. It's kind of like the energies are present and you can work with the energies and you can get the greatest thing out of these energies, but you can also get not so wonderful things out of the energies. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, we're always striving for the greatest thing, the greatest expression. That's what I'll typically focus on, but I felt to share that. Okay, so moving on. The Mercury person's drive, desire, ambitions are impacted by... No, the Mars person's drive, desire, and ambitions are impacted by the Mercury person's intellect, speech, way of being, humor, all that stuff. And it's also happening in the opposite way. So, and we're going to get into like more fun stuff with the connection too, because this is like a total Bobby and Whitney vibe, which I love, but we just like got into this technical energy and I kind of fell in love with it. So like we're here, but well, no, I guess this, this is fun, but I'm just looking forward to other parts of it. <laughs> like I'm having a good time here with you guys, but I'm looking forward to a different part of the show. <laughs> I'm really excited to share that example. Okay. Anyway, focus. We're here. We're almost there. So that's totally such like a Mercury and Aries thing. I just, can we skip to the good part? Like, (laughs) even though like this is the good part, like I get it. But like, I also would like to, I'd like to hit the fast forward button on this. And I do that on TikTok. I literally watch my videos on 2x. I'm not sitting here for three minutes when I could be sitting here for 1.5 and I will figure it out. And if I can't figure out the context by speeding it up two times, baby, I'm swiping because I'm not here for this. Anyway, let's move on. (laughs) Okay, but I also have Neptune in my third house, which we can talk about these all these different things later. But because I have Neptune in my third house, I like to, I believe that talking is a journey. I believe, (laughs) I believe in storytelling. (laughs) And I'm not, I'm not talking about lies. I, I think when I'm communicating, why take the fast route when we could take the scenic route? So when I communicate to other people, I like to take the scenic route. But when other people communicate to me, I'd like for it to be quick and easy. Thank you. Don't waste my time. (laughs) But that's mostly because I really like what I have to say. (laughs) Okay, okay, let's move on. So the, what was the fucking example I gave? Okay, now we're switching it to the Mercury person's. How the Mercury person's intellect is impacted by the Mars person's drive. So let's say I'm going to give a different example, different signs. Give me a second. I got to think the Mars person's intellect, how they speak, how they show up in their daily life really um, impacts the Mars person's drive. It's almost like the energy of when you go to, um, you know, uh, um, a, a motivational speaker And they're saying these words and they're doing these things and they're living this life. And you're just like looking at them and you're listening to them and your energy is just getting like so pumped up. And you're just like, oh my God, like after this conversation, like 
I gotta get my shit together. I gotta go clean my room. I gotta take a shower. I gotta brush my teeth. I gotta brush my hair. I gotta get my shit together. I gotta do things. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta move forward in my life. I gotta take action towards my goals. I gotta do something like that's the vibe. How the Mercury person speaks, how they show up, activates and impacts the Mars person's drive, how they go after their goals, and their desires. You like my voice? It turn you up? This ain't not wait till you see it in a thong. That's the energy. That's the Mercury person. The Mars person probably really likes the sound of the Mercury person's voice. The Mars person is going to be very attracted to you, very turned on by the sound of the Mercury person's voice, how they speak, the melody with which they speak, the tone of the voice, whether it's high pitched, low pitched. Is that, is that, is that a phrase? Deep, whatever. You know what I'm saying? The vibrato. I don't know what that means, but it sounded good. So I put it in there. Like, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like it just, the way that the Mercury person communicates gets the Mars person going. And the way... Okay, I'm kind of feeling like... Yeah, I'm, I'm like sitting here and I'm like, I feel like I've already said this. And I did. I kind of already said that in a way, you know what I'm saying? It's literally the same. It's just literally just vice versa, okay? So you have two people who really inspire each other. There is a great deal of inspiration here. And I have to give you an example, a real life example. And yes, it is an example from the same guy, even though, yeah, that's the best example that I got. You know what? No, I actually have another example. Okay. I have two examples. So the one example, the guy has Mercury and Taurus opposite my Mars and Scorpio, my drive, my passion, my ambition. Mercury and Taurus, his thoughts, his way of thinking, his way of being. I talked about him on my podcast. When we went out, he was talking a lot about money and things are so expensive and just like just being a really cheap guy, you know, no big deal, whatever, live your life. When we would hang out and he's asking me like, oh, what are you doing? I was kind of doing the same thing that I do today. You know what I mean? I was working on my business, figuring shit out. This was when I was living in Atlanta with my cousin. Well, right outside of Atlanta with my cousin, but it doesn't matter. So I was like, oh yeah, like I'm working on this and I'm creating this and da 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 And then as I'm talking about my drive and my ambition and all these things that I'm working on, the things that he talked about changed. The things that he talked about were more focused on, oh yes, this is my business that I'm building and creating and all of this stuff. And I remember, I don't know when I said it, I said it at some point, but he had like at one point sent me a picture of this jewelry that he was making. And I didn't really understand why he was sending me a picture of his jewelry because we were just, we were just hooking up. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't, it wasn't anything more. And I'm the type of person I've, I'm a Scorpio, but I'm also a Pisces. So I'm a double water sign in my big three, super duper emotional and all that good stuff. And so I'm like, you know, I have Pisces on the cusp of my fifth house. I love love. I love falling in love. I could totally fall in love for three months and, you know, know that we're not going to get married and all that stuff. Like, I don't really care about that. Um, But the Mars and Taurus person was like, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. what his voice sounded like but that's that's the best rendition that I got for you okay he's like I don't want you to get the wrong idea I don't want you to fall in love with me and I'm like okay (laughs) even if I did I would never marry you it's like it is what it is like (laughs) 
like, okay. So anyway, so what's the point? The point is, is that he sent me this picture of this jewelry. And I'm like, I don't really understand what you're sending me this for. Because he was a terrible communicator. And I was just like, I really don't think that we need to text or communicate or talk at all. You just let me know when you're coming to pick me up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, um... Yeah, so he sent me this picture of this jewelry thing for this like business, whatever that he was creating. And at the time, I was just like, I really don't understand why you're sending this to me. But astrologically speaking, of course, he was sending this to me because my drive and my ambition and the way that I work towards my goals powerfully inspired something within him. It triggered that energy within him. These things the way that our energy is impacting one another, it's not necessarily happening consciously, right? So you're not meeting these people and being like, oh my God, you have Mercury and Taurus. I totally think that me talking about my goals and my dreams is going to impact you in this way. Like, you know, like I didn't really think about it until now. I also had another experience where I have Mars and Scorpio and this guy had Mercury in Pisces. And I wasn't, I don't know what happened, but the times, okay, this happened multiple times, but I just remember there being times where I would be hanging out with him and I would be talking and, you know, maybe we're talking about random things. Maybe we're talking about work-related stuff or not, but by the end of our conversation, He's going, I just feel so inspired. I'm ready to get back to work and da 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 da. Yeah, I know. You're fucking welcome. <laughs> You're fucking welcome. The Mars Mercury connection, ladies and gentlemen. So you don't have to be doing these things on purpose. It's your energy, it's the energy that you embody. Your natal chart is the energy that you embody, okay? You don't have to do anything. You're not trying to be anything. It's who you are. The fullest expression of who you are. You understand what I'm saying? So your expression of who you are, if you're the Mars person, it's triggering your person's mind. It's making them more curious. If you're the Mars person, the Mercury person wants to know how you think. The Mercury person wants to know more. The Mercury person wants to understand more. If you're the Mars person, you have a specific way of doing things, of working towards your goals. Oh, I like manifestation. Oh, I do this and this and this. Oh, I really focus on building habits and it takes two weeks of consistent action to build habits and da 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 da. I'm doing my best Virgo impression, okay? I'm doing the best that I can. If you're that person, then the Mercury person is going to be looking at you and they're going to be like, tell me more. Tell me more about this. Tell me more about this two weeks to form a habit. Tell me more about this book you're talking about. Tell me, tell me, and tell me more about this. Tell me, tell me more, right? So there's an energy of curiosity. There's a desire to understand. And there's also a desire to be more like you. If you're the Mars person, you really inspire the Mercury person. You could even inspire them creatively okay and if you're the mercury person your mind and your thoughts and your creativity your mind and your thoughts and your creativity and the way that you learn really inspires the mars person's drive so the knowledge and the information that you have to share and to teach can impact the way that the Mars person goes after their desire. So this is a really great relationship for growth and expansion because you have two people who are experiencing this intense connection with one another where there's a really great opportunity for there to be a meeting of the minds. Um, 
we'll get more into the aspects in a little bit. But if you're having an experience where like there's an opposition and maybe that opposition is a little bit tight, it might be an experience where there's a miscommunication or like a mishap or like a we're not really on the same page. We're trying to get things together. If there's an opposition or there's a square, it just requires a little bit more effort and attention and willingness to reflect. If you're dealing with an opposition or a square, you're really being given an opportunity for healing. Because if you've got Mercury in Scorpio and Mars in Scorpio, there's just kind of like this. If you have Mercury in Scorpio, your person has Mars in Scorpio, there's an understanding. I know what it is. We both know what's going on. We're very clear on that. We don't really even have to have a conversation about it. You know what I mean? But if you have like Mars in Scorpio, your person has Mercury in Taurus. When I had that experience, the desire and the energy and the spark and the intensity was absolutely there. But trying to get things off of the ground was the worst. It was like the guy couldn't hear me when I was talking. He's like, I don't want you to fall in love with me. I'm like, trust me, I'm not. And I didn't say things to hurt his feelings but I was being very honest when that was never going to happen and it was never going to be an option but that opposition he has Mercury and Taurus opposite my Mars and Scorpio and he has Mercury retrograde and he is not in that stubborn Taurus energy putting any energy and effort into learning how to be a better fucking communicator. I'm getting mad thinking about it. (laughs) Allegedly, I'm hot at it. It just was a really stupid fucking situation. It was a stupid situation where all the problems could have easily been resolved if he was willing to actually work on his communication, which he was not, so... It is what it is. You know what I mean? But that's that's the vibe. When there's opposition there. When there's a square there. It's not that things can't be harmonious. It's not that things can't be great. It's that you have shit that has to be worked on. And when you have oppositions and when you have squares, the shit that needs to be worked on is being triggered. It's being brought to the forefront to be dealt with. And if you or your person is not willing to deal with that shit, then the relationship will be shit. And it's one of those, you know what? And it's probably better if we never do this situations versus when there's a conjunction and there's a harmony. It's like, oh my God, I love Beyonce. Oh my God, I love Beyonce. Shut up. You love Beyonce. I love Beyonce. Oh my God, do you love Renaissance? Oh my God, I love Renaissance. Oh my God, I can't believe that you love the Renaissance album. What's your favorite song from the Renaissance album? And at the same exact time, you guys are both like church girl. And you're like, oh my God, I cannot believe that we both love Church Girl from the Renaissance album and we both love Beyonce. Did you go to the Beyonce concert? Oh my God, yes, I went to the Beyonce concert. It was the greatest concert of my life. I cried the whole time. Oh my God, I went to the Beyonce concert and it was the greatest concert of my life and I cried the whole time, right? That's the energy. We get it. We understand it. When you have a conjunction, okay, so we're kind of like, already on the next slide but we're not done just talking about the connection because we haven't even got to the fun example yet guys but anyway so is that how you spell harmony harmony (laughs) (laughs) i'm so sorry hold on hey google hey siri hey siri How do you spell harmonious? Harmonious. H-A-R-M-O-N-I-O-U-S. Okay. I spelled it correctly. 
That just looks silly to me. I don't know if it's my 75% functioning brain right now, but that just looks silly. <laughs> that looks incorrect. <laughs> if you know me, you know that um, when I pray to Jesus for a husband, I pray that he sends me a man who can spell things very well so that our children can have a fighting chance. Because, hey, I'm the queen of the typos. It is what it is. God gave me the gift of gab, not the gift of spell. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's move on. So when you have a conjunction or you have a trine or even a sextile, I love a sextile. And the reason why I love a sextile, a sextile is like, okay, so you know when a conjunction is when you got the same sign, boom, we're in there. A trine is when you've got the same element. So a conjunction is like, oh my God, we both love Beyonce. Oh my God, we both love Renaissance. Oh my God, we both love Church Girl. Oh my God, we're, the, we're exactly the same. Oh my God, you look just like me and I look just like you. <laughs> okay, it doesn't have to be like the physicality thing, but like maybe, I don't know. That depends. I, I don't know why we went there. I, I have no further comments on that. But it's just that energy of like twinning, okay? Total samesies, right? When you have the energy of a trine, let's say you have the energy of like Cancer and Pisces, then it's like, oh my God, I love Beyonce. Oh my God, I also love Beyonce. Do you love Renaissance? I love Renaissance too. And it's kind of like, oh, what's your favorite song from Renaissance? Oh my God, I love All Up In Your Mind. And it's like, oh my God, All Up In Your Mind is a great song. My favorite song is Summer Renaissance. Oh my God, Summer Renaissance is a good song. I appreciate that. You know what I mean? It's like, we're not exactly the same, but we're very similar. We have similarities. We have similar taste. We get each other. We understand each other. So there's an opportunity for growth and expansion because when I'm around somebody whose preference is all up in your mind, I'm being given an opportunity to explore all up in your mind from a different energy and perspective. It's different being around people who love things and who really appreciate things and their love of things and appreciation of things can really rub off on you and impact you and vice versa, right? So a sex style, a sex style is like, hold on. <clears throat> a sex style is when you've got like harmonious elements coming together. That's how I would describe, no, not harmonious, like different elements that are harmonious that work together. So all of the, we talked about opposite signs, right? So all of the earth signs are going to have opposite signs that are water signs. And all of the fire signs are going to have opposite signs that are air signs. Okay. So you've got your opposite signs and a sextile happens when one of the sister signs is connecting with an opposite one of the signs is connect maybe I've never explained this. This is why this is why they talk about shit in degrees because honey <laughs> Okay, I have to give you an example. Like okay, if you have Scorpio energy, Scorpio is going to form a sextile to Capricorn. Scorpio is a water sign. The opposite of Scorpio is Taurus. So when Scorpio and Taurus are together, they're opposing one another. But when Scorpio goes over to Capricorn, we can get along. I like this. Capricorn is earth energy. Water likes earth energy because water can be kind of, you know, flowy. When water goes into earth, it gets grounded. Scorpio and Capricorn, they can be friends. They understand each other. They're like, okay, they form a sextile. Libra and Sagittarius. The opposite of Libra is Aries. But when Libra connects with Sagittarius, Libra's like, okay, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can mess with this. I understand. I can get into the vibe of this. So a sextile is really great because I would consider a sextile to be an opportunity for growth and expansion because you're connecting with somebody that's not 
exactly your same element, but it's also familiar because your opposite sign, although it can feel like super duper triggering, it's also like two sides of the same coin, right? So when you're forming a sex style, you've got one sign that's kind of going and connecting with a different energy where it's just like, hmm, it's different, but I could get into it. Subconsciously, you're just like me. Baby, I did not think I was going to be explaining this when we got into this. I'm giving you the best that I can with what I have. And maybe in the future, I will have better examples, okay? So you will know if you just put the birth charts in the thing, it will say Virgo, sex style, Capricorn. And then you'll fucking know, okay? Why, why did you even explain that? When you have calculators, babe. <laughs> I forgive you and let's move on. So anyway, and now I don't forgot why the hell I was talking about sex styles in the first place. Okay, so sex style is an aspect where there's harmony, but there's opportunity for growth and expansion. I like sex styles. That's what I was saying. I like sex styles. I like Capricorn energy and Scorpio energy together. I like a sex style. I like Aries energy and Aquarius energy together. Sex styles are nice. Aries energy, I'm fiery. I'm a starter. Aries energy is going over to that Aquarius energy. Or Aries energy is going over to that Gemini energy. Aries is fiery, is passionate. It's quick-witted. And Gemini and Aquarius energy, they're air signs. So they're also very fast paced, quick witted. Aries energy is going to really enjoy being around energies like Aquarius and Gemini. Because Aquarius and Gemini can really keep up with them intellectually. Are you following me? Sagittarius is going to really enjoy connecting with Aquarius Because Aquarius can keep up with Sagittarius intellectually. Aquarius and Sagittarius are incredibly intelligent signs. They might have different motivators. Sagittarius wants to explore. They want to understand. They want to be a part of that world. They want to be where the people are. Aquarius might be a little bit more humanitarian. They're a little bit more focused. They have a desire to experience growth and expansion. It is really coming, you know, as a consequence of the fact that they felt a little bit left out in the cold and now they want to, you know, start it from the bottom. Now we're here and I get to take my whole family with me type vibe. Like that's Aquarius energy. So Aquarius and Sagittarius can come together. They can have a meeting of the minds. They can talk about growth and expansion. They have different reasons for being there and desiring that growth and expansion. But when they have that conversation, they really understand where the other person is coming from. There is opportunities for growth and expansion within that, but they have that harmony. They have that thing in common. So if you have a sex style, it's like, I love Beyonce. Somebody else is like, oh my God, I love Beyonce. Beyonce it's like oh my god my favorite album is Renaissance they're like oh Renaissance was a really great album but my favorite album is four we like the same artist we don't have the same favorite album but we can bond over Beyonce you like Beyonce I like Beyonce I like bad bitches because bad bitches like bad bitches too period that's the vibe when you have a sex doll And then we can talk about our favorite albums. We can bond over Beyonce. We can share our favorite songs. This is why this is my favorite song. Oh, wow. Hearing your story or hearing your perspective or when you talk about the way that you really like that song makes me like that song just a little bit more. You don't have to change who you are, but it's about broadening your horizon. So there's a really great opportunity when you have a sex style there and it feels more harmonious versus squares and oppositions. Oh, baby, we're not talking about this no more. <laughs> I'm tired of talking about this. Okay, we will talk more about squares and oppositions later. Okay, because we, we still have to get to the fun part. God, you're suffocating me with all of this technical talk. Okay, we will talk more about different aspects in different videos. We will spread it out. We're having a great time. I have no idea for how long I have been speaking. 
Oh my God, I think it's been over an hour. I'm like pretty sure it's been over an hour. Okay, so moving on. When you have Mercury and you have Mars, you've got this excitement, you've got this fun, you've got this humor, you've got this sensuality, you've got this passion, you've got this desire to connect. Mercury and Mars aspects is like when people talk about getting talked out of their undies. That's Mercury Mars aspects. Mercury Mars aspects is like a meeting of the minds, but also there's sensuality, there's drive, there's a desire. So when we're dealing with Mars, we're we're dealing with our goals, we're dealing with our ambitions. So there is an energy of moving things forward, moving things in a specific direction. If you're looking for, you know, a long term connection, then these are two people who are going to come together. And they're going to go, I'm looking for marriage and they're going to move towards marriage. These are people who would date each other and behave in a relationship with one another as if they were moving towards marriage. Or if you're doing more of like a casual thing, friends with benefits thing, these are people who would have that conversation. Okay, we're having a friends with benefits thing. Um, there's like, um, there's like a, 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 <laughs> I'm thinking of I'm thinking of how to put it in my mind, okay? It's like um there's there's a quickness, okay? Because there's Mars, because it's drive, because it's ambition, it's desire, okay? Mars likes what it wants and Mars wants it right now. If your Mars is in a different sign, then that might be a little bit different. So the pacing could really depend on the signs that your Mars and your Mercury is in. So I'm trying to think of how to give the examples without telling too much of my business, okay? Because I don't really have examples from other people's lives, girl. (laughs) Okay, like, you know when you're, like, going to hook up with somebody? And it's like, I know that we're going to hook up, and I want to hook up with you right now, but before we hook up, I actually need you to get every single STD test possible immediately without delay come to me with those papers tomorrow today by 5 p.m tonight right now do you have them on you like you know what I mean it's like that kind of vibe we know what we want we know what we're moving towards we know where we're headed so there is a sense of direction there's a sense of goal whether that goal is for something long term or that goal is for something short term. I know you want this for life. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know if that song is the perfect energy, but the vibe is I want you. Period. There is an attraction, there is a desire between two people. This is your like if there, if you're somebody who's like a sapiosexual person, Mercury, Mars aspects is going to be your vibe. It's going to be right up your alley because it's talking, it's communication, it's sharing ideas, hearing the Mercury person, the Mars person talk about their knowledge, talk about the things that they have learned, talk about, you know, all of the things that interest them. That's going to get you going. Having those conversations is going to really excite you and do it for you. Okay. So you have that, but you also have this really important aspect of like fun and play. And that's something that I really wanted to stress in this episode. It's fun and it's play. So Depending on what sign it's in, how you have that fun and how you have that play might be different. But there's fun and there's play. And if you got that harmonious aspect, then your definitions of fun and play are the same. And even with 
Like, I don't even like saying challenging. Imagine harmonious was spelled right, but challenging was spelled wrong. I don't know why I feel like something on this page is spelled wrong. Harmonious. I don't know. It just looks like harmonious to me. <laughs> okay. Anyway, please focus brain. We're almost done here. Okay. So if you have like even a challenging aspect, even an opposition, like, uh, Okay, so the Mercury in Taurus guy, I have Mars in Scorpio, he really liked nature. Kind of was like, I wouldn't necessarily say like an exhibitionist, but like, okay, you understand where I'm going? And I was on what the, the same type of time that he was on. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Even though there was an opposition there. So just because it's opposite signs doesn't mean it's opposite desires. Doesn't mean we don't want the same things. Although we might enjoy the same things physically, we might want different things out of a relationship or we might find it difficult to communicate what we want and what we desire in that relationship and pull things together, right? But it could be an experience where you guys just don't want the same thing in a relationship, okay? So like that's available, but that's not really what we're focusing on. We're focusing on you here and you've been watching this this long because you like somebody and you pretty damn confident that they like you back. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you're not here because that person is like, I hate them. And you're like, I hate them too. Like, that's not the experience that you're having, okay? You just sat with me for over an hour because that's your boo in some way. You know what I'm saying? So doesn't matter if it's a square or it's an opposition, if there's, you know, more communication and a little bit more effort needing to be put in in order to make it harmonious, or in order to, you know, get to that end result, the energy is still there. So there's this mutual understanding of what is fun. So yes, we talked about humor and yes, we talked about laughing, but we also talked about like enjoying how these people enjoy life. Mars is a planet of pleasure. We're not just talking about smexual pleasure, right? We're talking about the things that we enjoy because ultimately with this planet of intensity, you want all of the things that you want in your life because you think that you're going to feel better when you have them. So Mars is also something that really wants to enjoy life. Mercury is something that wants to enjoy life as well. Mercury is going to be really good at learning things and picking up information. Excuse me, but Mercury only wants to learn things that Mercury really gives a shit about, okay? So if Mercury, if you have like Mercury in Virgo and your, no, let me do a different one. If you have like Mercury in Scorpio and you really love occult shit, then you're somebody who is going to really enjoy having conversations about occult shit, supernatural shit, aliens. I don't know. Maybe fucking aliens. Maybe ghosts. Maybe ancestors. Maybe demons. Maybe like, right? There's a million different things that you could be talking about. So you really love these things and you really love learning about these things. But just because you really love those things and learning about those things doesn't necessarily mean that you want to talk to somebody who has Mercury in Aries about fucking sports or whatever that people, whatever people with Mercury in Aries care about. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so Mercury is what you're interested in and what excites you and what you really consider to be fun. So there's fun here. You've got this Mercury aspecting your person's Mars or your Mars aspecting your person's Mercury. Mercury loves to learn. It just depends on what sign it's in. So what you love to learn, what you love to talk about, what you love to share, 
the person who has Mars loves to hear about it. It gets them going. It inspires them. It turns them on. It, you know, helps them move forward towards their goals, helps them reach their goals. And as they're reaching their goals with that energy and that information, that energy is feeding back into you. It's fueling your passions. You're learning more. You're discovering more. It's impacting the way that you act and you behave and different things like that. And then it gets more complex. But that's That's the overall energy. You're understanding me, but it's fun. It's fun. I hope you're having fun. You know what I mean? Like, there's a very, like, I'm hating. No, I don't want to say that I'm hating this video because I think this video is really good. And I think this video is really informative. But I don't think that this video does a very good job of expressing the fun, lightheartedness of the Mars Mercury connection so if you're somebody who has mercury in capricorn you got somebody who has mars in capricorn then mercury in capricorn you probably genuinely enjoy talking about entrepreneurship you probably genuinely enjoy talking about moving forward in your career you probably genuinely enjoy talking about shit like politics you probably genuinely can have a really good fun time talking about the future that you're building for yourself so as you're talking about these things that you're passionate about and this future that you're building the person with mars in capricorn is like oh my god I'm loving this I'm having such a fun time I love it here I love your mind I love your ambition I love blah 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 blah. and the reason why I said ambition even though we're talking about the mercury person is because Capricorn is an ambitious sign you're understanding me you're feeling what I'm saying so it's fun it's enjoyable what's something else like if you have Mercury in Leo and you're dealing with somebody who has Mars in Leo your idea of a really fun time is going out to the theater you want to go see a play your partner who has Mars in Leo they also want to go see a play or with your Leo energy you really want to go to a ball game because Leo energy is all about sports and shit your Mars and Leo person is like, oh my God, I would love to go to a ball game. Or maybe you have Mercury and Leo and your person has Mars in Aries. You guys are forming a trine. You guys would have the most fun time going and doing sporting activities and shit. You would really genuinely enjoy that. So you have a really fun time and there's this lighthearted thing. Okay, so Whitney and Bobby and then I gotta get the fuck off of here because I've been talking too long and I'm afraid that this is gonna cut off but I'm not gonna jinx it okay we're gonna make it to the end so Whitney and Bobby iconic couple we're not gonna talk about the negative aspects or any other speculations just some iconic clips that are all over the internet there's one clip where they're in this store and you probably know it. And if you don't know it, I'll like have it linked. Fuck, there's a million things I have to link in this goddamn description. I'll have the, I'll have the videos linked. I'll remember. Okay. So anyway, so he's like in the store and he is talking. They have Mars Mercury connects. Okay. Um, it's not even like the super strongest aspect, but it's a perfect example regardless of the aspect it's just a beautiful example of this energy in action so he's in the store at the beginning of the clip he's putting this cream on his under eye he's like yeah you use this cream for this because it helps with your dark under eye circles or some shit like that right and he basically is like yeah I just saw my wife last night for the first time in like a month so you know how that goes and it's like yes I do know how that goes (laughs) and people who have Mercury Mars connects you know how that goes there's a very strong desire to connect 
right? It's one thing when you see somebody and they are physically attractive and it's just like two Mars energies, which we can talk about at a later time. It's just two Mars energies. It's like, oh, like I'm loving this. But that Mercury energy, it's like, oh my God, you open your mouth. Like, I like, I like what's inside of your head. I like who you are as a person. I'm enjoying this. I'm digging this. I like this. I want more of this. I want to experience more of this. And you know what? No, we don't have time to talk about anything else. Let's continue. So in the video, he's like, oh yeah, just saw my wife last night. Long story short, we were up all night. You know what I'm saying? Then he's like, okay, I'm trying on these new glasses. Whitney comes in. He's like, do you like these glasses? And then she starts like making up this song and they start dancing in that motherfucking video. In that motherfucking video. They literally, how are they dancing in sync? You just, you just made this up. How do you at the same exact time, when I say Mercury, Mars, connections in astrology is like I'm on whatever type of time you're on immediately. Just, just a knowing, just an understanding just just immediately one one person starts singing one person starts dancing it's happening at the same time what came first the chicken or the egg we don't know we just know that these two people two peas in a fucking pod all of a sudden they're dancing you have a whole fucking dance routine did you guys practice this beforehand no you didn't mars mercury connections and it's an air signs. So it's very quick witted and it's fun and it's humorous. And then they're doing that like iconic thing. He's like, do you like my glasses? She's like, they work for me. They work like, <laughs> it's such a good video. It's such a good video. Okay. So like that's the vibe. And then the other vibe, it was just on Twitter the other day because it was like the 10th or 20th anniversary of the Black Eyed Peas song. And I think the title of the song is Shut Up. And Winnie is in the car and she's like, I love this song. Like this song is an absolute hit, right? So she's in the car, she's listening to the song, she's singing along and the lyrics to the song is just like, shut up, just shut up, right? And so she's like in the car, she's like singing to the song. And then Bobby is coming out of like, She's like in the car, in the parking garage. He's like coming out, going to the car, into the parking garage. They have not seen each other. She's on the fucking opposite side of the parking garage. She's listening to the song. She's fucking getting it, singing along to the song. She's like, this is my jam. Bobby comes out. The second, he's not, he doesn't even walk up to the car. He gets into her proximity, into her energy. <laughs> She's singing and dancing, and he is dancing in the middle of the fucking parking lot. Just like, no, no thoughts about it. Whatever type of time you're on is the type of time that I'm on. When it comes to fun, and when it comes to play, and also when it comes to making love. You know what I'm saying? When you have that really good, harmonious aspects the type of things you like or the type of things I like the type of things you enjoy in the BED or the type of things that I enjoy in the BED do you understand what I'm saying there's a harmony there and it creates really really fun relationships so if you're looking for a relationship where you are intellectually stimulated and mentally stimulated, where you have fun, where you laugh, where you play, where you can kind of allow your childlike nature to come out and to be loved and accepted and kind of really egged on, then you want Mercury Mars connection, period, point blank. It's a fun, iconic energy and a vibe and it really depends on like who you are and what your definition of fun is but if you're a person if you have that mercury mars connect your person is on the same time that you're on you know what i'm saying like you've got it okay it's um kind of that your person just has to 
give you that look and you know instantaneously you know exactly what it is okay last thing because i have to talk about the my experience with the opposition because it's so good and it's just coming to my mind now as we're talking about this i talk about the experience that i had with that guy with mars and taurus we went out i was very physically attracted to him we ended up meeting at like this like cigar lounge and he's like okay do you want to like leave this place and like go for a walk whatever so we leave the place and we're going for a walk and we're like walking there's like a fucking dark alleyway right there he asked me what my love languages are i'm telling him what my love languages are and he basically isn't listening to what i'm saying and I, he waits for me to say physical touch, but like, it wasn't even in my top three. Okay, maybe it was my top three, but like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it was not the most important one. And he like, tries to wrap his arms around me as we're walking past this dark alleyway and there's like a van there. And I ended up like pushing him away because like, what the hell is going on? Like, you're activating my nervous system. I don't know. What made you feel like we was finna do that? We ain't never did that before. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry because respect women's space and be a better fucking communicator and actually care about connecting with the women that you are wanting to, I can't say make love to, but, you know, do the thing, but not making love. You know what I'm saying? Like, actually give a shit. And you wouldn't have problems like this. You know what I mean? And so it just kind of like created this like, not even like an awkwardness between us, but I could tell that it created this like awkwardness within him where he was kind of like afraid to touch me. You know what I mean? But like, let's move on. (laughs) We don't need to get into anything any further. But the point is that in our connection while we were going out, okay, just for all intents and purposes, there was that miscommunication, misunderstanding. We literally had made plans to hook up, but we had made plans to hook up in this very specific way. And while we're in the midst of hooking up in this very specific way, he's like, we should hook up in this different way. I'm like, no, we should not. I said we were going to hook up in this way. What made you feel like we was going to do that? We have never done that before. (laughs) That's the type of shit that happens when you have the opposition. And I imagine the type of shit that that happens when you have the square. Where it's just kind of like when you're trying to do that dance and you step on the person's toe and it's like, oh, look, sorry. Like you got to put in more energy and effort to get the footing right when you have the oppositions in the squares it's not impossible it's not hard you don't need to tell yourself stories and perpetuate limiting beliefs about who you get to be and what you get to have and whether or not the relationship is doomed because of a little opposition or a square i'll talk more about my thoughts on things like that in later videos but i also wanted to share that experience whereas when there's a conjunction or there's a trine like whitney and bobby says a trine there's this we're just in sync we're just here we just, we're here with it. We get it. We understand. The type of time you're on, I'm on. I get it. I understand. I know exactly what we're doing. I know exactly where we are. I'm clear. I'm clear and I get it. Period. Okay? So that's the vibe. That is all that I got for you for this video. I really, 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 really hope that you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe. If you have not already, please comment down below. Tell me what your favorite parts of this were. Tell me that you enjoyed it. I love, 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 love hearing your feedback. And if you want to know what's next, you can check out my Relationship Astrology 101 playlist. It might be the Astrology 101 playlist. I don't know what the title of it is yet, but it's a playlist and you can check it out. It's on my YouTube channel. I love you so, so much. Don't forget to hit the notification bell if you have not already i post videos on astrology and manifestation and tarot readings because i'm amazing and there's nothing that i can't do i love you lots and i'll talk to you in the next one bye